Hi, TDSB families. It's Dr. Fiona Curry, and today I'm going to be talking about visual schedules. On the same YouTube channel, you'll actually see a similar video already on visual schedules, an excellent one put out by our speech and language department. Um, so watch that one first. I'm doing a couple of things a little bit differently, kind of tailoring it to my own experience at home. But I think that you'll find that video very interesting as well. I know it's been a couple of weeks since I made a video, so I'm hoping everyone is still hanging in there. And I'm hoping by now that you've learned a new rhythm of how your life is going and you're adapting well. It's only a few weeks until the summer. And then um, we're going to be faced with different challenges, right? So uh, stay tuned for the video that I'm going to be putting out next time, um, how to keep your kids uh, busy and active following an exercise schedule. So visual schedules, what are they? They are, they can be used in a number of different ways, either with pictures, objects, or in written form of what the day will look like. What are you doing in the morning? What are you doing in the afternoon and evening? It's like what you do when you're looking at your phone or your day timer. How many times do you check it per day to see what appointments you might have or things that you have to do, calls that you have to make, or sticky notes that you might leave for yourself? For a child, particularly who's nonverbal, it's very difficult to um, remember information because most of our kids can't either speak and or read and so that makes it even more challenging. So having the schedule in picture form or in object form or even in written form if your child does read helps them a lot. It's not a first then though. It's just simply the order of the activities that you're going to do in that particular day, not first do something I want you to do, then do something you want to do. It might involve activities that your child likes or doesn't like, but it's not used in the same way as a first then. I'm going to go over this briefly because the other video covered it in much more detail. Why are visuals important? Because they last longer than speech. When you speak something, it disappears, but the visuals last longer. And they are they help in communicating information in more than one way. As we're talking to our children, if we're also using visuals, then they're getting both visual and auditory information at once. They can help with transitions, helping to prepare our children to change from one activity to the next. They certainly help to organize the day and establish routines, and they provide structure. I always say to parents, what would your day or how would you feel about your day if you didn't have your phone, your calendar, your day timer with you? It might make you feel a little bit anxious, not knowing what the rest of your day is going to look like. So that's what the visuals do. They can help reduce anxiety or feelings of nervousness and help to increase flexibility so that a child might be more likely to engage in activities if they know what's coming and they can help redirect your child if they get really stuck on a particular activity. You can bring out the visual schedule and show them what's next and try to move them along. Before you make a visual schedule, my number one tip would be to contact your child's teacher. Perhaps you know the email or there's another way that you're communicating because in many of our classrooms, children are already using uh, different types of visual schedules, and it would be important for, your, uh, for you to know what your child recognizes. Are they using an object-based visual schedule with actual objects, perhaps Velcroed or taped to a schedule? Are they using actual photographs on the schedule or picture symbols? Or perhaps it's just written out in text. But your teacher, child, your child's teacher can provide a lot of information if a schedule is being used and what works for your child so that you don't need to start from scratch. They might even be able to help you um, with some of the visuals. 
Here are some examples of different visual schedules. It might be time-based, uh, routine-based. It might involve text, as I said, and drawings. Whatever's going to be work at the best for your child and whatever you're going to be able to use at home. Here are object schedules, and these are for children that are really starting out and not yet looking at photos or picture symbols and understanding that they represent real objects. So here's an example of an object schedule here. Someone has actually Velcroed a toilet paper roll, a little ball, um, and other objects. So you could have um, a diaper, uh, if your child is in diapers, to signify that if there's going to be a bathroom break at some point. The schedule over here actually has a fork on it, a little cup. There's so many different ways that you can be creative. And for children who are either young or are really not responding to photos, object schedules can be really helpful, especially if your child has vision issues. Your child might be able to actually feel different three-dimensional objects with different textures, and that might help them uh, move throughout their day more easily. Here's an example of a visual schedule that I use with Jacob, my son. And he's been going to school for a long time, but every day I show him the visual schedule. And I'm, I'll get to some of the different uh, tips I have for that a bit later on. But I include a picture of him, a picture of the bus. This is the picture of, her, of his teacher. I decided she may not want that to be known publicly, so I have turned it over. And I've got picture uh, that he's going to school to see the teacher, coming home on the bus, and then to see me. And here are a couple of tips. Start slowly and just start with two to three activities. Don't expect your child to be able to learn how to use a schedule right away. It's a teaching process. So keep practicing. And if it's appropriate, you might decide to have your child pick some of the order of the activities. Can they decide that they want to do a coloring activity and then um, do a sorting activity? If they like both of those things, it may be appropriate for them to be able to choose the order. Make sure that you have their attention and use simple language. It's time for bath um, or um, dinner is finished time for iPad. Stand behind them at first and help them to point to the activities. They may not be looking, they may not be paying attention, it may be hard to keep them there. You just want them there for a few seconds. Don't worry if it doesn't look like they're looking. They may need to go through this process many, many times, but we find that a lot of children may not be actually looking, but are still taking in the information or glancing out of the corner of their eye. Make sure that you review before and after each activity. It's time for lunch. Then lunch is finished, time for TV. Keep the schedule where everyone can see it, so you don't put it in a drawer. You keep it out posted and make sure that it's at the child's eye level. Some common misperceptions that I hear from parents. They might tell me, my child already knows the schedule. It's the same every day. I don't need to, to create visuals for this. And what I would say is, most of the time our days are, are similar, especially during a pandemic, but that there are gonna be days that are different. And so we wanna give children a heads up that something, perhaps a favorite activity, is not going to happen like we thought it would, or to get them used to things unexpectedly happening and then reviewing it. Sometimes parents will say, I already tell my child what's going on, I don't need to show them. Again, having that visual increases the chance that they'll remember it and that they'll be able to process the information and move throughout their day without having as many behaviors. Other parents might say, my child won't listen or look at the schedule. Again, be patient. They will get there. You just need to give them practice and um, don't try to rush them too much. Again, here is my 
visual schedule I used with Jacob. And you can see here a yellow star. I use the yellow star and I usually uh, have text underneath that says special activity. So if I know, for instance, that Jacob is not coming home on the bus, if I think if I know that that day he might be going to a, a getting bus to a different program, I would put the yellow star on and say special activity. It can be used for a variety of things, any kind of change, and then you can rehearse it with your child. If for some reason there's a favorite activity uh, every day that you do and it's not available, then you can just simply cut out the, the universal no symbol and put it right over the piece of paper that you're using. I don't expect you to have Velcro and a laminator at home. So again, you can just print these out or draw pictures and use your visual schedule that way. You just wanna make sure that they're cut into small um, pieces of paper so that you can alter it so that you don't just have one schedule that works in one way. You have to make it flexible enough to accommodate different changes that might be happening from day to day. Here's a couple of ideas when you're troubleshooting. Start slowly, as I mentioned before, and think about the order of activities. If your child is getting stuck, it may be that you're going from a very highly uh, non or highly preferred activity to a non-preferred activity. So for instance, you might say uh, first uh, hamburger, which your child loves, then haircut, which they don't love. That would not be a good idea. What you would try to do is to have something that they don't like followed by something that they really do like. That can, that can help out. And if your child gets upset, you can try using a reward built into the end of the schedule while you're teaching it to him or her. Finally, I've just included a few references for you, pages, uh, websites that you can go to to read up on visual schedules, and a third one that talks about object-based schedules. That's it for this week. I hope you've learned a little bit about visual schedules and that you're, you can see the benefit of using them. As I mentioned before, I'm going to be shooting a video that shows how you can use a specific type of visual schedule, one for an exercise program that can help motivate your child to keep active and to keep their day structured and to keep them busy. Have an amazing week and I hope you're all well. Okay, take care. Bye.